Okay, here's a couple of examples talking about expected value. So let's say I have this probability distribution here, and I gave it to you in a table. Remember, there is another way of giving it in terms of a histogram, but I gave it in terms of a table. So there's four possible outcomes for this random variable x. We'll call x a random variable, and they are x can be 2, 3, 4, or 5, and that's it. And the probability that x can be 2, 3, 4, or 5 is respectively a half, a quarter, an eighth, and some unknown value. So maybe the first thing we want to do, we want to find the probability that x equals 5. So remember, the key to this is remembering that, hey, if these are all of the outcomes, the probability of attaining each outcome must add up to 1. So using that idea, we know, well, let's call this uh, unknown. Let's give this unknown a name. I would usually call it x, but we're already using x for something. So just to be clear, I'll call that unknown y. And that's the probability that x equals 5. So we know that the probability of attaining 2, that's a half, half of the time, this um, situation, you get a 2. A quarter of the time, you get a 3. An eighth of the time, you get a 4. And some unknown amount of time, with unknown probability, you get a 5. But if you add up all those probabilities, you must get 1. So we can just solve for y here. And we get, let's go over a common denominator of 8. So we get 4 eighths plus 2 eighths plus 1 eighth plus y equals 1. So that's 7 eighths plus y equals 1. And you can think of 1 as 8 eighths, or you can just subtract 7 eighths from both sides, and you can realize that y must be an eighth. So we found that missing probability. We know the probability of attaining 5 is an eighth. OK. So next we're asked to find the expected value of this distribution. It's also the mean of the distribution. So this is the distribution or population mean. Note that this is different than us taking a sample mean like um, what we did previously in the course because we didn't know what the distribution was like. We just had some points and we found the mean of that sample. But here, we know the probability of attaining all of the values. So we know everything there is to know about this population. So we can indeed calculate the exact mean of the population. This isn't an estimate. This isn't from a sample. This is the exact population mean, which is the expected value. So for B, we know that the mean or the expected value, they're the same concept, is going to be each value for the probability distribution multiplied by the probability of attaining that value. So a weighted average. So half the time we have a value of 2. A quarter of the time we have a value of 3. An eighth of the time, we have a value of 4. And another eighth of the time, we have a value of 5. So let's add them all together. So we get, this is going to be 2 times a half is 1. 3 times a quarter is 3 quarters. 4 times an eighth is 4 eighths, which will make 1 half, I guess. And 5 times an eighth is... 5 eighths. And if we add them all together, we can think of these as eighths. So that's 8 eighths plus 6 eighths is 14 eighths plus 4 eighths is 18 eighths plus 5 eighths is 23 eighths. Or if you like, this is 2.875. And even before we did any calculation, we knew that the expected value 
had to be between 2 and 5. Of course it is, because it's kind of an average, a long-run value. If you um, took a sample from this distribution over and over again, and you look at the average of those samples, you would indeed get 2.875 if you took really, really large samples. We definitely wouldn't get something smaller than 2, and we definitely wouldn't get something bigger than 5, since they are the minimum and the maximum values. And we'd expect it to be um, weighted more towards 2 than towards 5, because the probabilities are larger kind of towards the smaller numbers here. So we know if we performed whatever experiment this is, we weren't told what experiment uh, this was, but that's okay. Um, but we know half the time we get a 2, a uh, quarter of the time we get a three, eighth of the time we get a four, eighth of the time we get a five. If we perform that over and over and over again and took the average of our outcomes, it would definitely approach 2.875. That's the expected value, the average value. Okay, so next I want to talk about the variance and the standard deviation of this distribution. And I'll do that on the next slide here. But again, these aren't sample standard deviations. They're populations variances and standard deviations. Because we know exactly how this distribution works, we can say exactly how, how spread out it is. It's not a sample. It's going to be an exact value. And we're going to think of the variance before. It's going to be the expected squared distance from the mean. So the expected squared distance from the mean. So the same idea as a sample of standard deviation, but again, it's a weighted average. And the population standard deviation is just going to be, of course, the square root of our variance. So I'm going to... Uh, Start a new slide, this will be up there, and we can have a look at this. Okay, so here's the information that we need to figure this out. It is indeed our distribution, and we're going to use the mean too, because we're looking at that squared distance of each value from the mean. So, we can look at it like this. I'll write it kind of a long hand at first. So that's the expected value of the squared distance. So here's the distance of each point from the mean. If we subtract the values, we get the distance. And then we're going to square it. So this means the squared distance from the mean. Here's the distance from the mean. Here's the mean. And we're squaring that distance from the mean. And we're looking for the expected value of that. So that's what's going on here. And again, we're going to weight each outcome here by the probability of attaining that outcome. So it's going to be the same idea. Let me write it down here. So when m equals 2, the probability of attaining 2 is a half. And what's the distance from the mean um, at 2? Well, we get 2 minus 2.875, since that's our mean. And we're going to square that. That's the first bit. And similarly, this is, maybe I'll make a quick note. This is when m equals 2. Maybe I'll do that in a different color, actually. Do it in red. m equals 2. And then when m equals 3, the probability of attaining 3 is a quarter from our table. And the distance from the mean is 3 minus 3, 2.875, since that's our mean. And we square that. Remember, this here, this is the distance from 3 to the mean, and then we square that distance and we multiply it by the probability of attaining that. Okay. And let's do it for the other two. Well, maybe I'll do it down here to get a little more room. The eighth times 4 minus 2.875 squared plus another eighth times 5 minus 2.875. 75 squared, again looking at the squared distance from each point to the mean, and then multiplying it by the probability of attaining 
that value. And now we just put it in our calculator and we get that the variance in this case equals roughly 1.109. So the average squared distance from each point here to the mean, again, um, oh, it's a weighted average, weighted by the probabilities, is 1.109. So if we performed this experiment many, many times, uh, got a value here, and then calculated the square distance from the mean, and then took the average of those, we would get 1.109, or it would at least approach 1.109 as we took more and more sample points. So that's great. And the standard deviation, which is at the square root of the variance, is roughly 1.053 using your calculator. So there we go. We can calculate the expected value, which is like the mean of the distribution. We can calculate the variance, which is the weighted average of the squared distances from the mean. And we can take the square root of that and get the standard deviation of a distribution. We can do that kind of for any discrete distribution we like as well. It's very nice like that. Let's move on and do a couple more examples. Okay, so let's say we have this game. And the game works that you pick a number from 1 to 10, inclusive of 1 and 10. And by a number, I mean a counting number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And this is randomly from a bag of numbers with the numbers 1 to 10 in it. Okay? If you do pick a 1 out of that bag, you win $10. If you pick another odd number that isn't 1, you win $1. And if it's an even number, you win K dollars. Now, K is an unknown. We're going to have to solve for that. And I have win in quotation marks here. You'll see why as we do the problem. So I don't know what K is, but I am told the expected value. I'm told the expected value is zero. So we need to find K. So maybe pause the video and see if you can work this out. A good idea might be to start with a a uh, probability distribution table, and you could have the amount of money one uh, for as your columns there, and look at the probability of attaining each of those values. And just to be uh, clear, we are picking a number from one to ten randomly out of this bag, if you will, so there's an equally likely chance of attaining any of these numbers. Okay, so now that we're back, let's look at our probability distribution of x, our random variable x, which is dollars one. So the values we can get are, we can get a 10, we can get a one, and we can get whatever this value k is. And the probability that a random variable attains this value. Well, how many ways can we win $10? Well, we can win $10 exactly one way, drawing a 1. So there's a 1 in 10 chance of winning $10, which is great. Well, what's the probability that we win $1? Remember, this is $1. So that's what I want as my column headings here. So the probability of winning one dollar, well, it's any other odd number. What are the odd numbers from one to ten? Well, we already used one, so the other ones are three, five, seven, and nine. There's four of them to pick out of ten, so there's a four-tenths chance that we win one dollar. And how many even numbers are there? Well, of course, there's two, four, six, eight, and ten. There are the rest of them, so there's five even numbers from one to 10. And it's always a good check. Make sure you have all of your outcomes uh, taken into account and none taken into account more than once. 
these probabilities should, of course, add to 1. And 1 tenth plus 4 tenths plus 5 tenths is 10 tenths, so we're good to go. Okay, so what do we know? We know the expected value equals 0, so the mean of this distribution is 0. And we know how to calculate that. It is the value multiplied by the probability of attaining that value for each outcome and then sum them together. So we get 10 times a tenth plus 1 times 4 tenths plus whatever this value k is times five tenths. Okay, let's simplify this a little bit. So we get that zero equals 10 times a tenth is one. One times anything is itself, so that's four tenths. And here we have, I'm going to simplify five tenths to a half, so we have a half times k. Okay, so what do we get here? We get zero equals, well, if you want to have this as a fraction, you can make this feel like 14 tenths or 7 fifths if you want to reduce it, or you could write it as a decimal as 1.4, it doesn't really matter, plus a half times k. So let's solve for k now, we'll subtract 14 tenths from both sides, and finally, we will multiply both sides by 2 to solve for k. So we get negative 28 tenths equals k. So that tells me, what is this in decimal? This is negative 2.8. And we're talking in dollars. So this is negative $2.80. So k in this case, the amount that we should quote unquote win is negative 2.8 dollars, so we're really losing two dollars and eighty cents when we pick an even number. So k is negative 2.8, so we lose two dollars and eighty cents when we choose an even number. And a quick note here. Remember, we knew the expected value was 0. So what would we predict for this value k? Well, we can say 10 is definitely positive, 1 is definitely positive, and we know the expected value is acting like an average. It is a weighted average. So in order for the expected value to be 0, we know k must be negative. That's the only way it makes sense to have an average of 0 if you have some positive values the unknown needs to be negative. 